your rear wheels are locking up. This is a cylinder off a rear wheel of a Toyota Hiace. Today I will show you how to change that and why this is the problem that your brakes are locking up. Now this may not be the problem your brakes are locking up. There are other reasons brakes lock up other than the failure of a wheel cylinder. It could also be something to do with the master cylinder. You may need to bleed your brakes, you might have air in the line. Um, or your brake fluid might just be too old and crusty and full of too much moisture. If water gets into your brake fluid, it ruins the hydraulic pressures you're going to get and your system will not function as well as it should. So go loosen your nuts, jack your car up, and I will show you why the brake cylinder on the vehicle I'm about to change is no good anymore. I checked it a week ago so I know it's the brake cylinder and I ordered this one to replace it. And then we'll show you how to put this on without having to dismantle all of your brake drum brake system, taking out the pads and all those annoying springs and stuff. We'll just try and replace just this. So you'll see here the wheel cylinder is on the top. Now it should be dry underneath these boots here, but I suspect it is full of gunge. As you can see there, brake fluid is pissing out. You don't want that. Brake fluid should not be coming out of that. So that is definitely buggered and needs to be replaced. That's how you know that that's the culprit and not some other part of your system. If it's leaking out of those, replacement needed immediately. When I cleaned this last week, this was all gunged up like it had a big blob of oil on it. And it was just all the brake dust and the brake fluid all mixed together and creating a big pile of schmoo. So, now we need to move these brake pads out so that we don't have to remove them. We will just turn this star wheel in here. I'll move the camera position in a moment. And we'll wind this out so that we can loosen this off and remove it without having to take everything else apart. Now on the back behind here, you see that? No. Right behind the cylinder is the brake line and the bleeding valve. I have just quickly sprayed the brake line with some CRC WD-40. Spray it with something like that. Some sort of penetrant lubricant dealy. Soften it up so that, because it's probably never been undone. So you don't want to break that when you take it off. To take it off you can use a line spanner, or just a regular spanner. Line spanners are good, but if you haven't got one, a regular spanner will do. We'll get a ring spanner and you can cut a slot in it. So in the back here, behind the wheel drum, you'll see this cap here is over the bleeder valve. And this line here is your brake fluid coming in. And this nut here you've got to undo. Just got to be careful, this is a stiff line. When you turn this, you don't want this to turn because you can snap it quite easily. So. You might need to let that soak for a bit. My one has co conveniently come undone quite easily with a 10mm spanner. So you need to remove that, remove this, and this will pop off. Once we have wound out this star gear thing here, it will push. This is the self adjuster for your brakes. As your pads wear down, this will automatically click, 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 and push your pads out further so you don't have to keep pushing your brake pedal down too far. But what we're going to do is wind it to its maximum, push these out, and then hopefully we can just pop this out. Once you've wound that out as far as you can go, and it looks like you can get your cylinder out, so this has moved out substantially here. Then you can remove the brake line on the back, which I've done here. It will pour out a little bit, but it will slow down. So there's also two other bolts on the back of here that hold the whole thing in place. Once you've removed the brake line and the bleeder valve, you then need to remove those two bolts, and this whole piece should then pop right out.
don't lose that. Voila. One crusty old wheel cylinder removed. Let me get the new one before all my brake fluid disappears. Now I'm lucky with this cylinder being that it's a, an old Toyota High Ace. It, it uses the same cylinders for both sides of the vehicle. So you don't have to buy a specific left or right hand wheel cylinder, but just beware, some vehicles you do, so just make sure you get the right one, of course. So, that yellow one there, that's where your bleed, uh, sorry, that's where your bleed has obviously come from. You need to remove that, so that you can get it in there. You may need to remove that, you may not, depending on your vehicle. I like to remove it, that way it's not going to catch as I try and get it through the hole or anything. So we're just going to put this back on, and the reverse that we took the other one off. go in like so. Once we've done that I'll show you how to get this to work again. You need to do the opposite of what you did but you have to hold this tang back. Try not to get any gunge in your holes before you get it in there and just remember where this goes because this will thread into both of them on this particular model so just make sure you know which one's which. In this case the bleeder goes on the top so I know that when it's in the correct position that's the one with the bleeder in. We also have a look inside, you should be able to work it out from the shapes at the bottom of the holes. Putting the line back on now. Once again, as you do it up, just be careful you don't twist that line. You will, of course, have to bleed your brakes after you do this. It's just fairly simple. You will, of course, need to also check, whenever you do something like this on your brake line, always check that there's not uh, brake fluid coming out of anywhere, anywhere you've loosened. We now need to get these brake pads in, and to do that we need to turn this cog in the opposite direction. But there is of course a metal tang stopping that, and that's what that clicking sound was, that locks it in place. So you need to push that in, like that, the screwdriver. Push it in, and then turn your cog the opposite direction until you've brought these two pads back in. Give her a quick clean. Don't want brake fluid on any of your, your pads. Now time to bleed it. To bleed brakes I use one of these one man kits, stick it on your vehicle like that, it's magnetic. Hook this pipe up to the back of the new bleeder valve you just put in and then go pump the brakes. Make sure you've opened the bleeder valve. <laughs> if you haven't opened it then if, when you push your brakes your pads are going to pop out and you're going to have to wind that thing all the way back in again. You don't want to have to do that. When you loosen the bleeder valve you should start seeing the fluid come up the pipe. I can see it on the back but you can't see it in the shot yet. Nice and noisy motorbike. Now we'll, um, I'll go push the brake pedal and you should start seeing the fluid come up. This is to remove air from the line. You can see the fluid coming up. And there's quite a few bubbles coming up through it. You want to get all those bubbles out. Just make sure you keep your brake fluid topped up. This is also a good time to bleed your whole brake system. I did this last week so I don't have to do that. I've got nice clean fluid in there. 
I just need to make sure I get rid of all these bubbles. Once I've done that, I can tighten up the bleeder valve on the back again, and then we'll put the drum back on, take it for a spin, gently test these brakes. You've got to get this adjusted a set back where it was originally. And just check everything's not leaking, and then you're done. I hope that was of some help. If it was, please subscribe. Uh, don't forget to check whether anything's leaking or not before you go for a drive. Take it for a test drive, pump the brakes carefully. Might feel a little different to usual. And just pump them a few times till everything feels right. Come back home, check that nothing's leaking again, and you should be all good. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on another one.